that what things happened during the crucifixion and his resurrection. And we were looking at the theme that said that God showed us his kindness through his son when he died on the cross. We also said that his death and resurrection makes us so rooted in our faith. And whatever comes our way, we should not always lose hope. We should always remember that the one we serve, that the one we believe is alive. We should always remember the empty tomb. That if he at all overcame the devil, we shall also overcome everything in our lives. We should always remember that although he is not here, he went to prepare for us and that we should always work towards that. We are here on earth, but our end result is heaven. And whatever he promised to us is going to come. And we should always be rooted and trust in him so that we finish well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have, our theme today is going to be after the resurrection. Because the other time we are celebrating happy Easter, happy Easter, he's risen, he's risen. And now after his resurrection what next are we going to stand and be still what does it mean for him to rise and then him to go to heaven we are looking at after the resurrection when we read in John 19.30, John 19.30, it says, And we are unfortunate that Pa is off. But whatever the enemy has planned, it is going to work good for us. Hallelujah. Amen. So John 19.30 says, that when Jesus had received the servine, he said, it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit can you tell your neighbor it is finished when it was finished we got the, 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 the accomplishment of God's plan for us the plan for salvation was for him to come to live on the earth give us an example then later on he was supposed to die and then he was to rise again when you read the Bible all these things were written and whatever happened it was just fulfilling everything the scriptures had talked about as if that was not enough the prophecy the prophets had already prophesied a lot about it right away from the Old Testament so here Jesus Christ was fulfilling everything that had been prophesied and that had been written about him and as Christians and believers 
are so happy and glad about it. That it was finished. I would like to assure you that he is alive. In whatever situation we go through, he is alive. The devil is a liar. He has no foothold on to him. He, he won the devil. Yes, we are one who is a He is alive. Yes, we We can also look at it in Matthew. Matthew 27. Actually, this is where we looked at the other time on Easter Day. It was 2745, but we are going to begin from 2763 to 65. If you're there, please say amen. So 63 says, and or oh, let us begin from 62. The next day it is the next day that is after the day of preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. And they said, Nebagamba, Sir, we remember how that impositor said while he was still alive after three days, I will rise. And Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Ntikale la gila bakumile dara maralo kutusa kuruna kwa roksatu. Aba igilizawe patero kuja oku muba. Bagambe avantu intiazuki dembafu. Elo kuchama, okuchama, okolu vanyuma kuli singwa kuli okwa soka. Pilate say to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. Pilato nabagama antimulina abakumi. Mugene mugakumi redara. Ngabwe muiza. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Tinabo nebagenda. Nebagakumi redara malalo. E jinja nebali sako akabonero. Hallelujah. Amen. So this was the plan that the Pharisees and the high priests had, had put in place. Because they remembered that this man had said a lot of things when he died, when he was to die. And in their in their thinking, they thought that he was telling lies. They even called him an impositor. And they even called him very many names. They thought that he was a liar. They thought he was not going to rise again. So they did all the, all the plans, all the missions, all the methods they could to see that his plans could not come to pass. And even after he had risen, they made a plan and called upon the gods that were at the tomb. They even gave them the answer. And told them that please tell the high priest that he did not raise it as if that was not enough. They told them that tell them that you were sleeping. When all these things happened, we were sleeping. 
And it was not in order for them to sleep. When they were on duty. But do you know what happened? They afforded at least to deceive to the to, to the to the chief priest or the, 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 the head of the Pharisees. That they were sleeping. They told him that don't you mind we shall give you a lot of money. Please go ahead and tell this lie. Because we don't want these people to accept the lie that he rose again. But thank, thanks be to God that whatever they did, they did it and people had it. And on the other side of the coin, the tomb was empty. And as if that was not enough, the angel announced to everyone and told the, the women that God tell everyone that he is risen. But that was not enough. In order for him to, to, to prove to everyone that he had risen, he went and appeared to people and especially to his disciples. Yes. He even appeared to them when they were behind closed doors. He proved to them that he is alive. I'd like to assure you even today this morning that he is alive. Whatever is in front of you it has become a mountain. Whatever is making you shake Whatever has made your heart so heavy, whatever has been so so hard on your side, I want to assure you that He is alive. He is there for you. He is by your side. He is looking for you. Just open your heart. Just open Him in your heart. Open your mouth. Him what you're going through. He is the reason why he, you are the reason why he rose again. If it were not for you and me, he would not have risen. If it were not for you and me, he would not have proved himself. How does God prove himself that he rose? He is God. He went around to very many people. So he ascended to heaven. He moved around eleven times. That he is not dead. He was not stolen by the disciples as they said. He did not frown in any way. He rose again. He was God in the flesh. So he rose again. Take heart. The person we are believing rose again. And he is alive. So here we are going to see how he appeared to the disciples to prove himself that he is alive. We are going to read from John. John chapter 20. We are going to begin from the first verse. And we shall end at verse 15. Let us begin maybe from 15 because of time. But if it requires us to go back, we shall still recap. So John 20, are we all there to do say yo? Let us begin from the first verse. Let us be very fast. 
Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running to, uh, together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen clothes lying there. And the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded up in a place by itself. So, verse 7, or, 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 eight, verse 8, Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she, sto she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Abo, neba mugama anti omuchara, okabi rachi. Nava gama anti kubanga bajem mukama wangi, nange simanyi jeba mutade. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you speaking? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I'll take him away. Yes, Namugama and Chomuchal, O Kavirati, O Nonyani, Yena Rosanti, Yemukumi or Suku, Namugama and his sebo, Ovanga, Gue, O Mutute, Walla, Mbuli, that your muta day, Nange, Namu Jayo. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabon, which means teacher. Yes, Namugama and Mariam. 
Namogama Murepulani and Tilaponi, Amakurugacho Migiriza. Jesus said to her, Yes, Namogama, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the, to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Yes, Namogama, and don't want to Kumanga sinaba kuri nyamu kureli chitangi. Na egenda eliba ganda bange. Obaburi lenti minya mukulu eli chitangi. Era chitamwe. Eli katonda wange. Era katonda wamwe. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And that he had said these things to her. Mariamu magadalena na jana aburi laba egini zwanti. Ndabye mukama wafe. Era... On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear for the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 20. When he, he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I, I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand in, into his side, I will never believe. Thomas Twenty-six. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Thomas, put your fingers here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not, do not disbelieve, but believe. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus said to him, 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Hallelujah. Amen. It has been so long. But I wanted to bring out the gist of the matter. We are looking at what happened after the resurrection. These things, when we get to know them, they'll plant us so much in the faith and in the person we believe. Because many doctrines say that he did not rise again. They even say that the Balokole are liars. They even say that, that, that we, we always want to follow uh, stories of the Europeans. They, they, they say that what, what we believe is not the truth. And many times you find people who have believed Jesus Christ backsliding. People who have heard Jesus talk to them in their lives. People who have seen miracles that have been performed in their lives. But when problems befall them, they forget the person they believe. They forget the power that is in our salvation. But for us who are, who are here today, and th for those of you who are online, every time you feel like you want to backslide, always remember this that we are going to here today. It, indeed, people will talk a lot about Jesus Christ. People will talk about uh, the, the faith of the Balokole. But always be focused. They will, talk, they will look at your, your situation and they will even uh, will use all words to, to show that you are nothing and your Jesus is nothing. They will ask you several questions and they will put you down. But please never give up on to Jesus. Always remain rooted. The person we believe is alive. He proved this by showing himself to the disciples. After he rose again, because of his love for us, he did not ascend into heaven. He first of all made it to everyone. First he did it to Mary Magdalene. We have read uh, it from 2015. Where he said that woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And he here is Jesus proving himself. In 16 he said to her, Mary, in the voice that she, 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 she really understood. And then he said, Mary, she turned and said to him, Aramaic, Nachuka, Namogama, Murepulani, and Tilaboni. 
which means teacher. Hallelujah. Amen. Here Jesus was trying to show or prove to himself that he died and he rose again and that he was alive. And neither did he stop at that. As Mary was clinging on to him, because Mary did not want to lose Jesus Christ again. Remember Mary Magdalene and Mary, the, the, other, the other Mary, were these women who were always around the tomb and they had seen a lot, they had, they had testified a lot about his death. So the pain in their hearts was too much. They were grieving so much. They were feeling the emptiness. So at this time when she sees the, the, the Savior, she went and held herself onto him. But here he told her that don't hold on to me because I've not ascended to my father. Please go and tell other disciples that I am alive. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was the first time that he was showing himself after he rose. Next he went and appeared to the ten disciples. Remember this time Judas had already uh, hanged himself. So they were they had they had remained eleven. And this Thomas the, the doubter he was always in and out of the disciples' gatherings. He would always go to the town and he would always come back. So even at this very time when Jesus appeared to the ten disciples, still Thomas was not with them. And when he came, they had locked every door and every window in fear of the Jews. And this did not uh, uh, stop him from entering to prove to, to them that he was alive. As they were seated, they saw him in their midst. And then he said, peace be with you. And when Thomas came back, they told him that we have seen our and he doubted. This was the second time that Jesus was proving to himself that he was alive. And on the third time, he came back when Thomas had come back from wherever he had gone. So when he entered the room, still behind locked doors, he told him. But Thomas, look at my hands. Look at where the nails were put. And that is when Thomas believed. Let us read from 24. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands and the marks of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails. And place my hand into his side, I'll never believe. 
So 26, the Bible tells us that after the eight days, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Orabidi mama kaga, orufanyo manga wai sewe na kumuna na ataba yigi dzwa bwali munda. Neto masingari na wo Yesu najja, inziji nga zigatua o na imira wakati mupona baga matemi rembeji mumwe. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Aonaga mato masintireta wanorunwero. All this Jesus was doing it so that they could believe that he really he died and he had risen and that he was alive. So even us today, in the places where we usually stay and where we go, we will always find people who, who always think that we tell lies that we are Christians, we believe Jesus Christ, and that He is so powerful. We always preach to them the word, but they, they don't believe. It was already said here when, when Thomas, who lived with him, who moved with him, who stayed with him for a long time, disbelieved him. So never lose your heart. Never lose your trust in him. Those people will always continue to talk. They will always do a lot. But always remain rooted. Sometimes they will even do a lot, uh, uh, a lot and threaten you. But never fear. Always remember what happened here. That he proved to everyone that he is alive. Always continue praying for those people. So that the right time comes for them. And you always prove to them that he is the son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are looking at the times that Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples and proved himself as being alive. So the other time he appeared to two disciples that were on their way to a village called Emmaus. And this one is in Luke 24. 13. Luke 24. Luka abidi monya beginning from 13 That very day two of them were going to a village named Emmaus about 7 miles from Jerusalem Awolaba kuluna ko oro babiri kubo bali nga bagenda mu mumbuga elinyaliyo Emmao and they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Eighteen. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him. Cleopas, 
Kuliopa. Yes. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? Nadamu na mugama ati gosula wa gosula weka mu Jerusalem mu Jerusalem ya tamani ebiaba mu munakuzino. And he said to them, "What things?" And they said to him. Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, a, pro, a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Na bagama ti bigambo ti ne bagama ti ebya Yesu mu Nazaresi e ali na pio wa mani mu bya yakolanga ne bya yayogeranga mu maso ga katonda ne mugaba tubonna 20 says orabi ne rugamba and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him ne bako ne abakulu na bakungu bafe be bamwayo okumusalira omusango ogwo kumutta ne bamukomerera but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel yes and besides all this it is how the third day it is now the third day since these things happened na yefe twali tusubira anti ye ali nunula isiraeli atene kubino byonna lero zine naku satu ebigambo bino kasoke debi bawo moreover some women of our company amazed us they were at the tomb early in the morning inti era na bakaza abamu abe wafe batunikiriza abakedde okugenda kuntana and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had be they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Nti nava mukwavo ababade na feba genze kuntana neva sanga weva chonga bakazi weva gambi na ye teba mulavi and he said to them oh foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken kare ye na bagamba nti abasiru siru abata abagaya vumitima oku kiri zavi onaba na piveva yogiranga. Was it not necessary that the chi, the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Yes. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further. But they asked him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward I evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from other from their sight. Hallelujah. We are looking at how he proved himself to the disciples that he was really alive. So we have seen these two men that were walking to Emmaus sharing about his death and his 
absence in the tongue. And even what the women had said about him. And we see him appearing and making known to them that he was Jesus Christ and later on he disappeared from them. As if that was not enough, he also appeared to, to Peter and the other disciples when they went back to the banks of the river to start fishing. Yes. So all these and very many other times when he appeared to the disciples were to prove that he is the son of God. Now to us who are here today we should also be rooted and take this gospel ahead. Because even told them that don't go out of Jerusalem Stay here first of all. In doing so, he was preparing them to go and preach the good news about himself. That is the very reason why we also accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. So after we have believed, after we have known him, we should be glad and be confident to preach this gospel to everyone so that we can win many souls for him. Hallelujah. Amen. He told them to remain in Jerusalem. He did not want them to go out without the Holy Spirit. Because it was hell outside there. Whatever they had done to Jesus Christ, it was they were ready to do it to anyone who was going to proclaim him. And Jesus knew it. So he told them that remain here. And promised them that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was supposed to give them the energy and the power to guide them in everything they were going to do. Remember these people had stayed with Jesus for a very long time. Three years down the road, from Capernaum, going to, to Jerusalem, staying around the, the banks of the river, moving on the water, doing a lot of miracles, doing a lot of things. I remember when he, 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 he paid tax for Peter and himself they were with him and here the tax collectors came and remember he had not paid his tax neither had Peter paid his tax because Peter had done away with the work of fishing they were doing the work of, of him that, that they believed so this time he sent Peter to go and get a fish from the river and he told him to open the mouth and there he found money and he paid their tax. Now this was the man that was departing from them. This is the man at one time who helped Peter when his mother-in-law fell sick of malaria. And Peter didn't know what to do next. But Jesus just went to, the, to his mother-in-law and touched him and she was well. 
This short commitment that was a relationship between Jesus and his disciples. Remember when he used to feed the, the people that, that used to gather around them? Neither did he feed them alone. But even the disciples also fed with, the, with Jesus Christ. They had gotten this kind of life that whatever trouble they had, Jesus Christ was always there for them. Now this is the man that was leaving them. He was promising them them to go and prepare for them in heaven. He was even telling them that the hour had come and that he had finished whatever he had planned to, to do. You can imagine when our pastor leaves this place and then he goes for a few months or a few weeks. He would have said, we always feel bad. There is always an emptiness. There is always thing, there are always things that don't move the way they are supposed to move. The way you come expecting to find Musumba at church is not the way you come when you know he's away. The way you come prepared for the service and he's the one to minister. It's not the way when you come and you know he's not the one to minister. But this one is a human being. And this one is our father. So even right now that he's away, if I had maybe a machine that could check the emptiness, I would see how much everyone is missing here. And you will get to know who is missing him most. And yet we know that he went and he'll come back. And some of even communicate to him. And he assures you of very many things. But now Jesus was going and was going for good. And they were not going to stay with him for all the rest of their, of, their, of their life. It was a very hard time. Yes, we are not so good for them. So, he decided to tell them that I am sending the Holy Spirit. That I have done whatever I was supposed to do. And I'm supposed to go. That if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. Hallelujah. Amen. So we should always have it in our mind that he is not away from us. He is always by us. Every time we call upon him, he is always there for us. Just take heart. But remember, he, he left us the comforter. He left us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so important in our life. The Holy Spirit is a power for us believers. He is always pushing us ahead every other day. From the time we believe Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, we waged a war between us and Satan. That we thank the Holy Spirit that has always been there for us. He always reminds us that please go ahead. And even in this same way, the Holy Spirit had to be sent. The Holy Spirit is, was also another witness. 
that Jesus Christ had resurrected. He was to be sent to them to always remind them and always guide them in their lives. And as you read, maybe when you, you go to the book of Acts, we are not going to read there today. Just take it as your homework. You will see the the tremendous tremendous uh, miracles that the, these people performed. How powerful they were! And, uh, that, uh, that uh, after Jesus had left them. That one only shows that he was with them. So we should not always give up because the person we believe is alive. Please take it from me. Jesus is alive. And the Holy Spirit is always with us. There are many religions, very many sects, that teach about the good morals. They always tell us do not steal. Do not kill. Love one another. I respect them so much. But I would like to, to assure you that it is only Christianity that is more powerful than all those sects. You believed a very strong sect. Why is it so? We have the Holy Spirit. Other sects don't have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that always reminds us of his death and resurrection. I'm so lucky that I grew up in a certain church. We used to sing. We used to read the verses. Uh, the, the first one and the second one. We used to do a lot of things in those sects. But little did we know that sin was bad. We would always go to church on Sunday. We would to be so holy. But after the service, we would one, you would go and boost. No kenda, no you had a boyfriend. Wainanga You could go and enter the shrine. You would hate people and hate them for the rest of your life. No chawa, but no You would do things that were contrary to what the Bible talks about. And yet on Sunday, you would appear so holy. We had books of those songs and they would parade us in different groups. I always sang the soprano and I would always lead. I started doing this as, as young as, as senior two. And everyone would praise me. Oh, you are so young. But you do these things very well. Inside me, the Holy Spirit was not there. It is just of recent that I joined this sect where the Holy Spirit is. But I understand that we are serving the devil. So I would like to assure you that stand still. The sect that we are in the most strongest sect. It talks about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we should also follow that. We should follow his footsteps. We should do as he did. So that we can come out as conquerors. 
you're refusing to do what the Bible is telling you to do, forget the good things that the Bible talks about. Forget what the promises that the Holy Spirit has led people of men to speak to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So please always call upon the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, to comfort you, and to see you through so that you may lead this life on earth as a true believer and also win heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, He becomes the power and the force within us to enable us to live according to His will. If His will says love, please love. If His will says worship. Please worship him. If his will says persevere. Please persevere. If his will says forgive. Please forgive. Remember he was at the cross and a lot of things were done to him and he persevered. Who are you not to persevere? If you are not ready to persevere, then please stop. Go out of this sect. Because you're seeking him in vain. He forgave the, those that that talk, that mocked him. He forgave them. He forgave those that pierced him. He, he forgave everyone that did all sorts of bad things to him. He would have cast them. He he wouldn't have maybe or formed anything or created anything to show how powerful he was. But all these things he knew he was just fulfilling the scriptures. So even you in your life, there are things that are going on in your life because they were planned for you. You have to go through them. So if you're going to curse people, if you're going to talk ill about people, you don't know the one you believe. So here am I to tell you that Jesus is more powerful than any other person. And he works in unison with the Holy Spirit and the Father. So let us accept him him and do as he wants. Remember that as he was not stopped to enter into the, the upper room where the disciples were seated, he cannot be stopped to enter your life amidst all the fears that you go through amidst all the pain amidst all the doubt amidst all the emptiness in your life amidst all the confusion that is going on in your life always call upon him he will always be there for you. He entered the upper room and he was telling them peace be with you. Peace be with you. I'm also here to announce that peace will be with you. All will be well with you. Person you believe is 
is powerful than any other problem in your life. Can somebody believe has got a very big plan for you. Can somebody believe that he is God himself. He is Jesus Christ the anointed. He is Jesus the Messiah who filled who fulfilled the promise of the Israelites. He is Jesus the Son of God. But of course appeared in flesh but he was God. So by us believing in him we shall obtain eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we are here on earth, don't be taken up by the earthly things. We are here on earth and we know we have to go through our, through the earth. So always cling on to Jesus to help you go through the, the, the tribulations on the earth. But don't forget that our end result is heaven. Avoid everything that can lead you astray. So that you win and win well. Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you.